Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math. And we got another fun problem for you. We have a figure here, and we need to calculate the area of the rectangle. What does our figure tell us? Well, we have three identical circles inside, and each one has a radius of one. These circles touch here, 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 and they touch the ends here, here, and they're like perfectly inside here. With just that information, can we calculate the area of the rectangle? So pause this video, see if you can solve this problem. It only uses some basic geometry here, but as always, we're gonna go dive on in and solve this problem here. So hopefully you learned some steps along the way. Well, first I'm gonna go label some points here. I'm gonna call this first circle here S, the second one I label R around the center, and this one uh, P. And this little intersection that happens here, I'm gonna call that a good old Q. All right, so let's go draw actually some extra lines with what we have here. I'm gonna draw a line across that connects S, Q, and P because they all go down the same amount here. Let me make sure it's level. Let's draw the scale, but here we go. I draw a line right there. So a line S, uh, Q, R going on there, and we know some information here about that line all the way to our end points here. Uh, I did not label the end points, we're good. Well, what is that overall length? We have the radius, 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 and radius here. Radius of each one of the circles and each one is one. One unit, one unit, one unit, one unit, meaning the overall length is gonna be four. So the length of DC here is four. So DC has a length of four, bringing that up there. And this is actually great. We already have one side length. We just have to find the other side length and we're good to go. That's the tricky one. All right, so now I said the radius is one. Well, that's also true. Look here, up, down, the radius one. That tells us that C to this point here has a length of a one. Now, if we go draw actually another line across here and see that this length from the circle across has a radius of one, the same thing actually applies. So we have a one right there. So what we really need to do is find the missing length right here. And that is actually the length and lines up of PQ. So let's go make that line here from P to Q. So we line PQ, okay? We have that line PQ, it's gonna be perpendicular. We got a little right angle going on here. And with right angles, we have lines. We don't know what the length of PQ is, but we can find the length of PR. Let's go make another line here. And what do we got? We're getting a nice little triangle if I can make the line. Right there, got a little triangle here. And this is actually the point of intersection, right? Where the two circles touch. And so we know what this length is. We know what PR is, and that's the length of the radius. There's two of them, right? Two radius going on. So this length is two. One, one makes it a two. So PR is a two and is also that, well not radius, the radius of each circle added, okay? And so, what we know about, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can find the length of qp. So qr, oh, we know that one too, right? One, it's a radius, qr. It's getting extra information here, all right. So one squared plus qp squared, which we don't know, qp, all squared, is equal to our radius two squared. Our radius hypotenuse. I keep saying radius hypotenuse. Kind of confused here. The hypotenuse. From there, we have QP. That length squared is equal to two squared, which is four minus one squared is one. So we have QP squared is equal to three. We square root both sides here. Got that. And QP has a length of square root of three. So if we have that length, there's a the square root of three, it translates over QP to this missing side length that we need here. One plus one is a two. And so CB is a length of one plus one, which is two plus square root of three. So now we have two side lengths of a rectangle multiplied together and we can get the area, not too bad here. So our area here is equal to a length times a width, all right, length times the width, DC being four, four times the length, I guess here, 
as DC is the width. And we have two plus square root of three, which is equal to multiply that out eight plus four square root of three. That's our area. And as a decimal, not too bad. This is a 14.9282 units squared, but we can write it as this units squared. And so the exact area of this rectangle with the information I was given was eight plus four square root three units squared or 14.9282 approximately units squared. Well, I hope you learned how to solve this problem if you didn't know it already and uh, had fun watching it. If you did, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This helps us make more of these fun math videos for you, for everyone else. So as always here, thanks for watching.